I'm Renee Richard, host of Roots of Faith. Today we're at St. Jude the Apostle Parish here in Baton Rouge off of Highland and Gardier. This parish had its beginnings in September of 1966, not long after the Diocese of Baton Rouge was formed in 1961. When it was formed as a parish, there was no church, so they celebrated Mass for the first two years at Magnolia Woods Elementary School. But in 1974, the building that we were in was built, and it was renovated in 2013, and we'll be exploring this young parish, 50-year-old parish, within our diocese on today's episode of Roots of Faith. My guest today, Father Trey Nelson, thank you for being on well, thank the Thank you very much. It's great to be with you. Good. How long, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, like how long you've been here, how long you've been a priest, just Okay, uh, I've been a priest for a little over 31 years. Uh, the, sort of the joke about it is I'm the only one left from my class. All the other guys oh, no. left ministry, but I am the sole survivor of the class of 88, so, and I'm, I'm very happy at 31 years. And uh, I've been here at St. Jude for a little over 10 years and love it. It's a very special place. I don't think there's a, a week that goes by when I don't say that at least once to somebody. So, that, oh, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so tell us a little bit about the makeup of this parish here, um, yeah. the demographics. Is it a young parish, older sure. parish, a good blend? Well, every parish obviously is unique. Uh, some of our unique features are, there are three that are, you know, basic, if you will. Uh, we've been described as the most culturally diverse parish in the diocese. Uh, and if you look at the complexion, if you will, of the assembly on Sundays, mm -hmm. the weekends, you'll see that. Um, in terms of the types of work that parishioners do, it varies, you know, from one end of the spectrum to the other. But the most significant factor is that uh, age-wise, of age of the congregation, we're, we're the youngest. Half of our congregation is 40 years old and younger. And that is, that is just, it's almost unheard of. I tell, I'd say it like that to everybody. And you'll see that um, not only on the weekends at Mass with all the babies that you hear and <laughs> see, um, but also with the number of baptisms we do every year. And uh, we're located... Um, <clears throat> in a part of town that uh, police department has described as a, as a difficult footprint, if you will, mm -hmm. because of crime. But it provides a lot of opportunity for our parish to do a lot of powerful outreach to the poor. So the Gardier Initiative, the Gardier mm -hmm. Christian School. This year we started something called Jobs for Life, which we're really excited about, and uh, things like that. So uh, that, that's another unique opportunity that, that comes with this parish. That's awesome. So I know when the parish was started a little over 50 years ago, there were roughly 600 families. Correct. What is your current um, I got of here. I got here in uh, 2009, and uh, we were like 2,200 whatever, uh, 2,600 families mm -hmm. actually. And now we're right at 3,200. So we've grown and we continue to grow That's in awesome. the last 10 years. Yeah. Very good. So 3,200 families. By comparison, I think uh, St. George is... 32 something, 3,300. Uh, so, you know, you don't look at it this way necessarily, but we're one of the largest parishes in the city. That's great. And yeah. your roots go back to having been carved out of St. Aloysius and St. George. Right, right. And you're located about five miles um, south of LSU on yeah. Highland Road yep. near Gardier, for those who don't know. We got a lot of watching. college. We got a lot of college students here every week. And uh, they're just a great group of people. All of them to death. They're awesome. We were just talking about the growth of this parish, and since you have been here, there have been major renovations yeah. done, a big project, yeah. and that has um, enlarged it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Tell we renovated that. the church. Um, it, it was like building a new one because we basically just gutted it completely and started over, mm -hmm. and we were just we weren't big enough, and so the end product, one of the end products was. We, our capacity went from 800 to 1,000 uh, in terms of seating capacity. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a beautiful worship space uh, for daily weekend worship, weddings especially, uh, and funerals. Uh, a lot of people like to ask to have their visitation here because we have the space and we mm -hmm. have the light. And uh, there are a couple of features to the new church, if you will, that are really special to, to me and to a lot of us. 
Uh, one is our altar, uh, which was carved out of a five, six foot diameter cypress tree that came out of a swamp in Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah. We wanted an altar that symbolized St. Jude. And in the meeting, of well, the saint or the parish or what? And so the second most popular gathering place is outside on our deck, which Father Mike Collins built several years ago when he was here. And it's, a, it's basically a wetland, though it's small, and you see all the cypress trees. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, cypress tree, this pedestal altar, was made by a young man in his 30s who carved it by hand. Wow. Um, the, the art glass or the reredose wall behind the altar, um, you know, things like that. Uh, and I could go on. But uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful worship space. It is the high point of my week, being here with this community. This community sings like no place I have ever, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, they always joke about Catholics not singing and sitting mm -hmm. on the back row and all that, but this place really, really sings. I mean, we, we're blessed with a beautiful music ministry for sure, but the assembly really sings. And, and, um, and that's so amazing when you're at Mass and you do get that, for me, yeah. when I'm at Mass and I get the, the music and the singing, yeah. that really is what I can come here mass. and be down or whatever or worried about something and I'm going to always going to come, come out of this feeling better than I did before. You know, so uh, we moved the baptismal font to the entrance of the church. Uh, so one could be reminded of their baptism as you enter the building. And what's really cool about it is something we didn't expect, but all of our little children, no matter what door they enter through, they flock to the main font to, to sign themselves. They love oh, going great. to the font. Yeah, so. So you were talking about the singing ministry. Tell us a little bit about some of your other ministries here. Oh, wow. Well, uh, we're, we've always had a very strong commitment to serving the poor. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul, for example, I mentioned some others earlier, Guardian Initiative and whatnot. We've got a great parish staff. We've got a great team. Um, our CIA is a very special thing that we go every year. It's just a really wonderful experience. We're always having people inquiring into the faith. Some of the ministries that may or may not be unique, uh, we have a ministry called Side by Side. It's for couples who've been married within the first five years, just kind of a support group. We have a support group for parents of gay children. Uh, we have um, a college group that meets once a month at the rectory. Uh, I have a friend who's a guidance counselor at Catholic High. She helps to facilitate the group, and I always cook for them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And <laughs> An we visit, plus. yeah, and we talk about whatever. And, you know, I really love them. They're awesome. They, they, we learn a lot from them. Uh, but those are a few things. There's a lot I could do. Uh, jobs for Life, which is brand new. It's a faith-based jobs training program. And uh, basically what happens is if you go through that program, when you're done, there's a graduation. In fact, it's going to happen this week. Uh, you will be, you know, trained in how to do a resume, how to do an interview. Oh, wow. Uh, and have a better sense of what your skill set is mm -hmm. and more confident. And... Uh, it's, it's a volunteer thing totally here in the community. And uh, I think we're at a point now where it'll probably become an annual thing. Uh, so I, I could go on. There's so many things I could mention. <laughs> we can always come back. Youth ministry is yeah. getting off the ground. Our, our old office building is now dedicated as the St. Jude Parish Youth House. Ping pong, air hockey, pool table, foosball, you name it. And kids go and they can hang out there. We pray together. We talk together. Um, and we're just trying to, you know, the thing about not just the building, but the people, you know, technology, as you know, is such a big part of life today. And everything in this building and the new office building, there's just technology everywhere. You know, whether it's the lighting, the sound, the climate mm -hmm. or whatever. But we also added in the new office building on the first floor, we, I asked them to build a studio to record audio. Uh, so we'll be, you know, uh, starting a podcast out of there. We have uh, original theme music for it that was written by a guy in the choir and recorded by him and um, hoping to get our kids involved in that. You know, especially kids who down the road may want to go into a broadcast journalism sure. career. You know. Well, that's another ministry too is, or, or don't you broadcast your masses? Right, the obvious. I miss the obvious. Yeah, yeah we, we, uh, we were at a point to where we were recording and uploading mass uh, every week and now we're at the point where we're going to be streaming live. It's not the same mass every week. Mm -hmm. um, we rotate. You know, um, I never really think about it that we're being recorded. Right. Uh, but we do. But it's a great ministry for those, yeah. not just within your parish, but for the Well, yeah, you know, I was talking to a, a lady the other day who, uh, her mom lives with her, and her mom is older. And her mom, you know, doesn't really know a lot about computers. She'll be the first mm -hmm. to tell you that. 
but the daughter will, you know, take out the laptop and bring up the mass and put it on for her, and she's like, makes her day, she says. People say when they're away on vacation, uh, whether they go to church or not when they're away, they'll pull it up and they'll watch it. So I think learning what's available to you technology-wise and learning the best way to use it, the most effective way to use it, um, is crucial in the church today. It's going to be even more so. Father Trey, we've been talking about all the technology and the new um, the new type of ministries that we have here. And, but you have basic ministries as well as most yeah. parishes, but they're dynamic in their own way too. So we'll hear a little bit about that if that's well, okay. Well, one of the things I have learned and want to remember, I've learned it from my mentors, uh, like Father Jerry Young, mm-hmm. uh, Father Mike Collins, who, as you know, passed from us suddenly a few years ago. By the way, I love this kind of weather because I get to wear this coat, <laughs> and this was Mike's coat. They gave it to that's me after awesome. he passed. Yeah. But one of the things I've learned is, you know, you've got to look to the future, progress, and move ahead, and be creative in new ministries. But the more important thing, really, you've got to do the basics well. And the basics are like education, liturgy, serving the poor, uh, and others who are alienated. And we do have a very strong commitment to prison ministry at St. Jude. We have a group of gentlemen who go to Angola uh, regularly throughout throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's huge and important. Um, Liturgy here at St. Jude is a wonderful, wonderful experience. We have a liturgy committee, and the purpose of that committee is to kind of just help me constantly discern how we're doing Mm -hmm. in terms of how we pray together, worship together, the music we do, the quality of the music, the quality of everything. Uh, Because when people come here, it's about an hour, right? And we want it to be the best experience that they can possibly have. And that requires a team of people working together, and that's very basic. Um, and, and we're blessed with that here uh, at St. Jude. All these groups who do these, these basic ministries that have been education, PSR for our public school youth and our, our non-Catholic private school youth or homeschool children, uh, it's, it's really important. Um, so anyway, and the youth ministry is becoming more and more challenging because of the, you know, the things that are going on in kids' lives. That's it. But uh, confirm- oh. no, confirmation preparation, uh, Kids are busier than ever, and it's just so hard to plan things that, that don't conflict with their schedule. And they're all, everybody's living at the speed of light, you know. That is so true. But I really, again, I, just to kind of come back, these guys who were my mentors, you know, be creative and do some new stuff. But Father Mike used to always say, and I'm going to do the Irish accent here, he would say, Trey, people come to church for two reasons. They want to receive communion and they want a good sermon. <laughs> and uh, I thought, you know, that's just a reminder, the basics, you can't get away from the basics. And I think here we have our, we need to grow and work on some stuff, but I just have found that to be really important to do. So. That's awesome. Yeah. In terms of outside of Mass, we were talking about some of the ministries. I know when I was preparing for this, one of the one of the ministries that I found really unique here was the Daughters of Mary. You have a young... Right. We have our Catholic Daughters who do so it, much for Catholic the Daughters. That's, That's okay. It. You got it. Uh, the Catholic Daughters do so much for St. Jude Parish. I mean, I could call today and ask them, can you help with this tomorrow? And they're going to do it. And about two years ago, uh, Linda Jones, our, our regent, came to me and asked, hey, there is a Junior Catholic Daughters program. How would you feel? So... I was all in on that, and we had a, a commitment ceremony, and I think there were maybe 13 to 15 young ladies uh, who joined it. I'd never heard of it before. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, like, right there, and they just threw their awesome. All right, we have a parish men's club. It's been around for a long, long time. And our men's club meets the needs of a certain demographic uh, of, of men in the parish. It's a good group, and they do so much for the parish. I mean, like, right now, they're completely on their own, renovating the interior of our parish hall. Just, oh, wow. just totally. Uh-huh. <laughs> lighting, paint, sound, uh, audio, video, you name it. Uh, and that's it, another group that you call on them and they'll do it, whether it's cooking for kids at the youth house or every year. And anybody who has a school knows that carpool's an issue anywhere <laughs> you go. Uh, our men's club, the first week or two of school, they are out there like an army uh, helping with carpool. And uh, so, but uh, yeah, that great groups. When I think of men's club too, I think of fairs because they're always mm-hmm. in every parish yeah. or the backdrop for preparing. Y'all do, you do have a fair here. We have a fair right? every year. Yeah. Uh, 
to be totally honest, uh, I hope this doesn't shock anybody, parish fairs were never something really that I got all fired up about <laughs> until I got here. And uh, it's just a great family experience. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a big ministry in the parish. People who work the fair every year work very hard. This past year when we had the big, uh, I don't know if it was a flood or the day it, the days it rained so mm -hmm. much, we had to cancel our fair. And the rides were already here. Oh, and we were completely flooded everywhere. And so we had to reschedule it. And that was a little hiccup. But we, we're back on track now. It's just a really, really good uh, family experience. few minutes ago we were talking about carpool lines and yeah. men's club helping with carpool lines yeah. and so it's obvious there is a school here there is um, and when the parish began there was not and you had a unique situation in the history of this parish because St. Aloysius actually stepped up to the plate and yeah. did an offshoot to help y'all get sure. off the ground That's way back when way right. back in right. its day but it, you don't hear of that with you know parishes starting out and trying to build a school. And now, you know, on another note, we partner with St. Aloysius now because one of the things we're noticing is that it's harder and harder at the elementary level to get enough guys to form a football team. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's just a kind You're of, right. a, it's, it's common. And so we partner with Aloysius to make a team. Yeah. So the partnership, there's a lot of history there. So tell us a little bit about the school here. Well, our school is awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm partial, obviously, but I, I genuinely am just so happy Every morning I get up, every night I go to bed. Any pastor will tell you if you have a school, it brings with it a unique set of awesome, awesome things you get to experience, but it, a unique set of challenges, you know. Uh, but our school is about uh, 560, 566 students. We have a great administration, a faculty, and a staff. Um, they're all in on the mission. Uh, one of the things about our school that is, is unique from any other in the area is we're not a thousand students and we're okay with that now one of the reasons we're probably probably one of the reasons we're not a thousand students is because as you know we're, we're landlocked here and we have no more property mm -hmm. so even if we wanted to expand the school we really didn't we don't have the space to do it but anyway uh because we're 560 or so you know it's like parents are very happy because they feel that the interaction between teachers and students parents and school is more personal uh, it's easier with a number that's smaller. If it was a thousand, it, it would be different. Um, and so uh, it, it's just, it's a wonderful, I go over there and I just, the kids are great. I mean, they really are, the teachers are too. Kids are very inquisitive and they're very, they're very uplifting for, for me personally. Um, but that's, that's what makes the school unique is the size and the real uh, unique personal, personalization of everything. That's mm -hmm. what you hear from everybody about it, you know. But I gotta say, our faculty, our staff, our leadership, I mean, really, it, it's just, it's amazing. I am so grateful that we are where we are. We've had our challenges like mm -hmm. any school. Uh, one of the places in school life that we've had to, over the last eight years, get better and stronger is unfortunately, it's an unfortunate reality, is security. Mm -hmm. It's I a very, that's... very, very secure campus, okay. as is our church and our office now as well. But I'm very happy that we've had all of our recent principals in our history have seen the need to do that. So whether it's video surveillance, uh, sheriff's deputy mm -hmm. on site every day, oh, wow. uh, locked perimeter, fence, gate, whatever, but still looking really nice, aesthetically beautiful, if you say. Uh, that, that's an improvement we made. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about that. You know? Great. Um, and we're talking about the school. This is the church. Your campus overall, mm -hmm. under your administration, you built a new yes. um, main We did the church. Uh, we built a brand new two-story state-of-the-art administration yeah, building. It's beautiful. I've been in it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I wish I could take credit for it. But uh, the second floor, that's where our office spaces mm -hmm. are. And the first floor, uh, meeting rooms, for example, will have confirmation class down there. Um, RCIA, you name it. But also we have one room that's uh, intended to be a dedicated recording studio. It's got the acoustic mm -hmm. panels on the wall and all that. And hopefully in the very near future, uh, next time we visit, I'll be able to say we're doing this. Uh, we want to start our own podcast and, and broadcast. And I'd like to involve students from the school in that if they want to come in and do a show. 
Um, but that's going to be another way to do outreach. We have mm-hmm. a, a name for the show. We have a logo for the show. Uh, You're saying you had music. Yeah, and yeah. we have we have a, a Brian Breen is one of the guitarists in our music ministry. He does a lot of theater work in Baton Rouge. Great guy. Wrote a uh, theme song for me, an instrumental, and recorded it. He says, what are you looking for? I said, I want something kind of like Jimmy Buffett background music. And that's <laughs> what he did. So. And what would the name be? You said you already had the name. My column in the bulletin for 100 years now, even in my other parish, is called From the Tea Box because I like to play golf. <laughs> and so the show's going to be perfect. called From the Tea Box. Yeah. We've been talking about this wonderful parish here, and if there were one thing that you want to sum up or you want to talk about in general about your community, tell us a little bit about that. Um, If anybody asks me, how would you describe your parish? I could do a lot of the detailed things that I've mentioned to you already, but the one or two words, qualities, that everybody uses to describe the community is family, number one, more than anything, and welcoming. Um, I have heard so many people uh, of all ages tell me that when they come here, they feel welcome. Uh, Last night, I mentioned to you we have our college group. We met last night, and there's a young man in the group who about six months ago moved here from Washington, D.C., and we were talking about this quality of the parish. He goes, that's right. He goes, "Uh, I got here, and my first day in the pew on a Sunday, right away I felt people were welcoming me. And it's just really, that, that's, that is who, you know, you want to talk about what the church is, that's mm-hmm. who we are. But the most, the most emotional and really significant uh, example, a couple of years ago, I was on the front steps after Mass. People come here from, from all over, other churches in the area and whatnot. Um, but I was on the front steps after Mass, and a lady walked up to me with her dad, who was, I think, in his 70s. Mm-hmm. And she goes, you know, we're on our way from, I forget where they were coming from, to go to MD Anderson in Houston. He had cancer. And she goes, we didn't know where to go to church. We were just so upset about what we're dealing with. And we just pulled in here on a whim. And I have to tell you, we're just so glad we did. Uh, They said, you know, your words touched us. But more than that, please tell the people how good they made us feel. And about a week later, I got a card in the mail from the gentleman saying the same thing. And then six months later, uh, a call from his daughter saying he had died. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And I just feel this community is, should be affirmed uh, in knowing that they have the ability and the openness to do that for one another mm-hmm. uh, and for people who we're visiting. And so I hear it all the time. We're a welcoming community. We're a family. And, um, and, and I see it. And we use those. I don't use those words loosely here because I think you and I would both agree mm-hmm. You go different places, and you don't always feel those things first. But this is what you feel first. The people are even more beautiful than the building. The church structure that we're we're actually standing in was built in 1974. Correct. And you were the one that came in to do these fantastic um, renovations. But you were able to retain yeah. some of, of the old to blend in with the yeah. new, and it blends so perfectly. Tell us a little bit about well, it all what started the with, whole process. It all started with the people. Uh, we noticed we were growing. We didn't have enough space in church on the weekends, so we had a series of listening sessions. And one of the, the biggest thing it led to was this. And when people came to the church for the first time after the renovations, the one thing they all said was, it still looks like my church. Mm -hmm. So if you look around, there are some new features, unique features. Uh, The altar is custom and handmade, the pulpit or the ambo, uh, the art glass uh, by Laurel Percari from New Orleans. We were able to watch all of these things from paper to production to installation, from the sketch and all of that. Um, The 22 stained glass windows, which were commissioned under Father Mike Collins, uh, those are all still here. We just moved a couple of them around. Mm -hmm. Um, The tabernacle, is not the tabernacle that was in here uh, before, but it is the tabernacle that was in the original church in the parish hall. Oh, wow. Stations of the Cross were the same Stations of the Cross, Mm -hmm. uh, but we changed the backing. We added the mosaic and the little niches throughout church. 
uh, and so on. Yeah. So it's it's a blend of the old and the new. And people say I, it still looks like my church. So yeah. Yeah, the physical structure there. I, I love the the tiles because. Um, the tiles are supposed to be branches right. to tie in yes. with this main art. Well, that's what's interesting the is the theme of the altar and the art glass, though they were done by two different people, the theme was Tree of Life. And mm -hmm. if you look at it, you see that. One thing about the church, too, though, was before the renovations, going back to 1974, we never had a permanent baptismal font. Okay. And now we do. Mm -hmm. It's very significant in the church, you know. So people feel that's a sign of welcome and, and going forth. But, yeah, we never had that before, and now we do. So. And one of the things, too, that we haven't talked about of, of yet, the old altar, the one that was made out of shell, had relics in it. It did. Plenty of parishes don't know about their reliquy. Right. Um, but you, you were able to Saint put St. Gregory, Gregory um, in this one. Yeah, St. Gregory, uh, the relic is actually in the altar itself. Mm -hmm. And what was really, really cool is uh, for the installation, part of the ceremony was the bishop uh, is presented a key to open the church from the outside. So there was a young man in our parish at the time was maybe 20 years old. His name was Gregory. And uh, he was just the coolest guy. And so I asked him to, to read the statement and give the bishop the key and then open the church. It was the neatest thing. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, one thing that struck me about the altar and the ambo, because they're both constructed out of the cypress, she yes. was saying earlier, yeah. which is considered the wood eternal. Yes. Um, I know y'all have the cypress trees outside yeah. and the whole symbolism there. Big but, part of Louisiana, too. But yeah. it's such a part yeah. of Louisiana. So I think that just ties it all together. Yeah, I mean, really. Louisiana is such a table culture, and the Catholic faith is such a table centered faith, obviously, so to connect that with the wood and whatnot is pretty powerful. So That's it. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. And thank you. Really, in our discussion, I really sense um, your, your love of this place, oh, more so than anything oh, any of the it's, other TV yeah, shows it's, that it's, I've uh, done and the yeah, community that you have here. It's hard to put words on it. It's, it's really, it's every week. It's just, it's great. I love, it's not a job, but I love coming to work. That's awesome. <laughs>